On this last video, I want to try to understand a little bit about how this model is performing. We created this pipeline. Um, it's actually complicated. There's lots of uh, kind of parts in it. And, um, and can we understand what it's actually uh, predicting? And so one way I could maybe start is I could think about, well, what are the coefficients that dot learned by my linear regression? And so I have my pipeline here. And um, one of the cool things about a pipeline in sklearn is you can use it like a dictionary where the key actually is the component name. And so for example, if I say uh, LREG here for linear regression, I can get the linear re regression out of it. And once I do that, I could, of course, I could get the coefficients and I could get the intercept. No problem. Now you can see that I have a lot of um, coefficients here, maybe more than you might even think. Uh, why is that? Well, first off, I went from two uh, columns to uh, seven columns here. And then I did a bunch of combinations of those, right? I tried squaring each column. I tried multiplying one column by another. And so I get lots of coefficients. And eventually as models get more and more complicated, it's hard to look at the coefficients and understand what's going on. And, um, and that gets even worse when you eventually get into deep learning. And, um, and, and there's basically a number like this for every connection between some neurons. And, um, and so we still need to somehow understand what our model is doing. And so one good way to understand what our model is doing is to feed it in some sort of uniform inputs, uh, see what it predicts, and then, then plot those predictions. Help us actually understand something. And, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back and look at one of these. I'm going to create one plot like this. And um, instead of having scatter points, there's going to be a line. And that's going to be the regression line. And I'm going to draw six lines like that because I have six different categories. And I like to know what those look like. OK, that will give me some sense of what um, I learned with this linear regression. And so how are we going to do this? I think the easiest thing to do is to create a data frame data frame where we have a couple of columns, right? And what it's trying to have to look like is all well, my training data, right? It has to, well, not try quite like my training data. It has to look like my training data that I actually fed in, right? I have to have the same beach name and then uh, the wave period. And so I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna have those same, same two columns. So uh, beach name, maybe something, and then wave period is going to be something else. And, um, and for now, let's just, let me just grab one of these. I'm going to grab a Kelmet Beach and put that in quotes. And then for this one, um, I want all the numbers from, from what? I guess from 1 until 10. Right? So I'm going to do that with uh, mp.a range 1 to 10. Step of one, right? This is exclusive, and uh, and let's just peek at that, and uh, and I have that, and, and then what I can do is on this data frame, I can do predictions with my with my pipeline, right? I can say predict, uh, just like that, and I get these values, and um, and rather than showing this as a separate thing and then trying to line that up with the original data frame, the easiest thing to do is probably to say, well, what is the well, predicted, I'll just call it predicted wave. And, and then I can look at what that data frame is, right? And I could, of course, plot that. I could plot it, a line plot where the x-axis is the wave period and the y is the predicted wave. Just like that, I could do it. And I can see what it is for that specific beach. And, um, and I want to do that for all of them. And at this point, since I have to do this six times, right, rather than you know, copy that six times, the thing I ought to do is I ought to actually put this in a, in a method, right? So I'm going to say plot beach. OK. And um, I do all of this stuff. And, um, and I have to pass in what the beach name is. Right? So I'm going to have the, the beach name like this, this here. And and uh, what else do I need to do? Oh, well, let me just try doing this for a minute. I think that was not changing anything yet. The plot beach. And, um, 
You know, if I go way back to the beginning, I think I had uh, pretty much all, but I had this list of all my beach names, right? That's going to come in handy. Let me um, let me just try to peek at that for a moment. If I have that here, uh, I can say, well, let's look at this beach this time, right? Look at that beach, and um, and I get that thing line, right? And I and I want to change what this um, what this label says here because. I'm about to have six lines, and I need to have um, have that be the name of the beach, right? So I'm going to say name like that. I see. Okay, great. That's uh, 63rd Street Beach. That seems correct. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do this for every beach, right? So I'm going to say for name and beach names, I am going to plot that beach, right? Just like that. Boom. And, uh, and I get these six plots for the six different beaches. Now, uh, next step is I'd like them all to be in the same area. And, um, and so what I'm actually gonna do is, uh, is this. I'm going to pass in an AX, right? I'm gonna pass in an AX here. And if uh, AX starts off as none, none means that it should create a new one. So I didn't change anything yet. You know what, I, I'm gonna do this, do AX, AX, right? So I have a means to tell it, hey, this is where you should be plotting, right? And it'll plot there, and it's none, right? So it's creating a new one. And um, and so the first time I call this thing, I'm passing in none, and, um, and so it's gonna create a new AX object, and it's gonna return it. And so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna capture that in a variable like this, Right, and um, I'm going to return that thing. And uh, so, what's going to happen here? Right, so if I pass in none, it creates a new one that goes here and it returns it. Uh, if I pass in something that's not none, an actual object, I'll pass it in, it'll use that, and then it's going to return the same thing. Right, so if I pass in not none, it just returns whatever I have back to me. Um, why is that elegant? Well, AX is going to go in here as none. And then I'm going to return a new one, which I'm going to capture in here. So then the next pass through the loop, I'm going to pass in the one that I used the first time. Run that. And I get these six nice lines. And I can see that there's kind of this pattern. Right? I can see which beaches are similar to each other. Um, I can see that the most mellow beach is the 63rd Street Beach. And, and just for completeness, let me, um, let me set a Y label here. And um, that Y label will be wave height. And, and I read in the documentation that I was in meters. And that's actually a nice plot. And it's gonna show me like this pattern that uh, it is actually, you know, if I head back up here, a little hard to see that, right? In this original data, right? I can see something like that. Uh, but now that I've actually done the regression, the, the trend becomes much clearer. I can make easier comparisons across the beaches.